Hi guys, WNews.com and I'm here with the iPad mini Retina. This is a device that was announced in fall 2013 and I am an iPad mini owner so I guess I'm probably the best person to tell you about the iPad mini 2 and compare it to the predecessor. We apologized for the delayed review of this model, it has been selling so well, it has been very hard to get hold of one. So here it is, the iPad mini, Rainy, uh, the iPad mini Retina review right here at TabletNews.com. This is a 7.9 inch slate, as you probably know from the predecessor, the price tag in USA is $399 and let's get to the design of this good looking device. The design is pretty much the same as the one of the iPad mini with a few modifications. For starter, the iPad mini retina is thicker, it measures 7.5 mm compared to the predecessor's 7.2 mm. It's also a bit heavier, weighing 331 grams versus 308 grams of the predecessor. It has the same width and the same length, so those ones were kept. How can you tell if you're holding an iPad mini or an iPad mini 2? Well, it's a very simple way. You can see that right here at the top we have two microphones, one hole here, one hole here, while the iPad mini 1 has a single hole and that's the way to tell between them if you're in a hurry. Other than that, we have an aluminum case, a glass front and very good adherence. Some say that the device is slippery, when you're holding it in your hand you'll see that it's actually not so slippery. It's very easy to use with a single hand if you're doing some e-reading or if you want to look up something on the web or in the app store very quickly. One hat should suffice and uh, the usual pill shaped buttons are here, it has become a trend already. So pill shaped volume buttons, this little uh, silence button right here, stereo speakers at the bottom flanking the lightning port right here and this little Apple logo that can also serve as some sort of mirror. It's comfy to use, comfy to carry, it has a premium design that combines aluminum and glass and it's a miniature of the iPad Air if you want to really be frank about it. So the design, you'll get used to it very fast, especially since it has become already a trademark for Apple. Now the hardware, what we're getting here is a 7.9 inch screen. This one is an IPS LCD with LED backlight and it has a retina resolution. I'm talking about 2048 over 1536 pixels, which equates to 324 PPI. It also has oleophobic coating, so you can stay away from fingerprints and such and uh, other things worth mentioning here are the CPU this one is a 64-bit CPU it's an Apple A7 dual core clocked at 1.3 gigahertz then there's the GPU it's a PowerVR G6430 and the tablet comes in 16 gigabyte 32 gigabyte or uh, 64 gigabyte or 128 gigabyte of storage versions. Inside we also have uh, 1 gig of RAM available and on the connectivity side we get Bluetooth 4.0, Wi-Fi with uh, dual MIMO antenna, LTE of course in that LTE version, GPS on the cellular version and the M7 motion coprocessor. We also get the uh, accelerometer, compass and a 3-axis gyroscope among others. The rest of the specs include a 5 megapixel back camera, you can see right here there is no there is no flash and a 1.2 megapixel FaceTime camera right here at the top above the display finally we get the battery this one is the 23.8 watt hour unit which is a pretty big upgrade compared to the iPad mini 1 16.5 watt hour unit we're dealing with a lithium polymer unit here and we also checked out the performance of the battery so let's analyze it and see how it did Okay, so we were at 14% with 8 hours of playback gone. Our way to test the tablet is simple. We play back a video on YouTube over and over again with Wi-Fi on and brightness of 50% and see how long the tablet can last. Well, after playing a bunch of videos, let's see how much we achieved. So we achieved, if I'm not mistaken, 10 hours and 8 minutes of continuous playback and the level left the battery was 3%, so from 100% to 3% in 10 hours and 8 minutes. Well, let's judge that. It sounds like a pretty good amount, 10 hours and 8 minutes. It's actually not if you compare it to the first iPad mini, and the charging takes 3 hours and 40 minutes, which I would say is reasonable considering how much time you get out of the device. If you want a comparison, while this one gets 10 hours and 8 minutes, the iPad Air gets 11 hours, 
An iPad mini 1, since I'm an owner, I can say it can even get up to 12 hours of playback, so it's superior compared to this model by about 2 hours. Meanwhile, the Android competition is not that stiff, with LG GPad 8.3 giving you 7 hours and 40 minutes and the Nexus 7 about 7 hours so overall this is a good battery with moderate usage with some web browsing, some gaming, some picture taking you can get 2 days almost even 3 days with medium usage however remember the iPad mini's battery, the iPad mini 1's battery is slightly better than this one ok time to test the audio for that I'm going to resort to Dropbox because I'm a cheapskate and I don't buy stuff through iTunes at least not on the tablet but on the iPhone. Okay, let's listen to some tunes like this one right here. As I said, we got a bunch of stereo speakers here that I'm going to test over the following minutes and I have to mention that the volume is pretty loud. Let's turn it up. Speakers right here. Stereo speakers. Good volume and good bass. Okay, one conclusion that I must draw here is that when you're holding the tablet in portrait it's all fine and dandy but if you imagine that you hold it in landscape and try to play a game or watch a movie you probably think that you'll muffle the speaker well you won't muffle it which is very good because there's one extra speaker here since there are stereo speakers okay so the conclusions the volume is loud uh, the sound is clear we have very good bass and unlike the iPad mini one this tablet does not vibrate at maximum volume and the volume is louder than the first iPad mini it's also clearer and uh, once you listen to a song on this device and listen to the same song on the iPad mini, the iPad mini sound will seem muffled to you, it will seem antique, it will seem like a Walkman compared to this device. So overall the mini 2 enhances the stereo speakers of the mini 1 and can do some battle with the Nexus 7 2013 that actually had some kick-ass speakers. Now on the video side of things, I am simply going to resort to my own uh, captures. I have quite a beautiful capture right here, should be able to show you this video. So this is a 7.9 inch IPS LCD screen with a resolution of 1024 over 1536 pixels, 332 ppi versus the 162 ppi of the iPad mini 1. The screen is sharp, it's clear, we got wide viewing angles obviously. This is an IPS, I wasn't expecting any problem on the angle area. The colors are vivid, there is no oversaturation, there is no sunlight problem, absolutely no sunlight problem, very good contrast. And if you want to talk about the lux levels, if you want to analyze figures and all that, microscope things, we even have that for you. Okay, here we go. This is our lux meter, we achieved 412 lux units on white, which is very good. Of course, it's not as good as the 500 units of the Nexus 7 2013, but it's very good as I said. And on black, we achieved 5 units, which is a bit too bright for the black levels, so the blacks are not that deep. The pixels are of the RGB stripe kind, you can see the pixels of the screen right here. This is a very bright tablet and the text is shown in an excellent way, so let me go to tabletnews.com. So you can see that the text is easily seen without having to zoom in. You can read the articles easily without zooming in, courtesy of the high resolution and the crisp screen. Once again, very good screen, very realistic colors and Apple has done a fine job with this display. Now moving on to the camera, this is a 5 megapixel shooter that basically it's the same as the camera of the iPad mini 1 and the camera of the iPad Air, while the FaceTime camera has suffered a small modification, it has a larger sensor and it can do improved low light capture compared to the predecessors. Ok, now get into the interface, you can access the camera like that, 
I'm going to use this castle right here, place it in a standard position and take a quick snap. This one is a very fast camera. Let's see the results. This is the castle. It's surprisingly little noise, I have to say that. So you'll be actually impressed by the quality of the camera, especially if you're a bit patient for it to perform its required focus. Okay, now as far as the options are concerned, well, we got HDR that you can select on or off here, and we got the usual video that slightly zooms in the image, and we got square. It has been made popular by apps like Instagram and all that. If you keep uh, press the screen in a certain point, you activate the uh, auto exposure autofocus lock. Well, uh, the idea is that you can choose a part of the image to select a special focus and exposure specifically for that part. And now let's check out the actual pics I have taken with this device. Camera roll, here we go. Okay, so first of all, the colors are pretty realistic. They could have been just a slightly bit more saturated, but just a slight. Usually, uh, Apple devices tend to oversaturate things, well, this one tends to make them more realistic, which is a shock for us all. The brightness is okay, the HDR is very efficient, and this camera can battle easily with the Nexus 7 2013 excellent camera. The video is done in 1080p, 30 frames per second, and once again, check out the colors and the level of detail that this camera can achieve pretty easily, even on a very sunny day, even with the sun up front, and even in some low light situations, which is pretty impressive. As I said, the video is 1080p, 30 frames per second, and the result is a file that has a bitrate of 17 mega per second. The sound of the video capture is mono, there are no focus problems, which is a shock. Even some smartphones like the Nexus 5 and the LG G2 have focus problems. It's usually the very enthusiastic continuous autofocus. Well, guess what? This model does not have focus problems, which is high praise for the device. And yet another video. Windy day. Excellent clarity, excellent brightness, excellent colors. A pretty decent digital stabilization. The camera has f2.4 aperture and 3.3mm focal length. This is it, the camera is excellent for the device, it's a 5 megapixel shooter, but it takes advantage of every single little pixel. Now as far as temperature goes, going back to the gallery, this time to show you the thermometer. After playing some games for a few minutes, we achieved 36 degrees Celsius, which means that the tablet gets slightly hot around this central area at the back, it also gets pretty uh, cold pretty fast, so it gets hot fast, it gets cold fast, it doesn't bother you, it can get slightly overheated, but only slightly, and it will not bother the average gamer. Now, let's talk some figures. The boot time of the device is uh, 20 seconds, and the shutdown time is 21 seconds, and by the way, the iPad mini 1 boot time was 30 seconds, so it has decreased by 10 seconds, while the shutdown time was 21 seconds, so it's almost the same or exactly the same. Once again, boot time for this device, 20 seconds, shutdown time, 21 seconds in my test. You're probably wondering about the speed of the device when it comes to the connectivity. Well, we have that covered. We actually did a speed test on this device and let's check out the result. Okay, so the iPad mini 2 scores 19.72 megabytes per second in the download speed and 21 almost megabytes per second in the upload speed while the iPad mini 1 scored on the same network and on the same test no less than 28 mega per second in download and 19 in upload so it's actually better in download and uh, lower in upload of course these values are relative so you shouldn't actually take them into account if they're not done by the exact same standard at the exact same time which is actually what I did that's why I trust them Apple actually bragged about the dual uh, MIMO Wi-Fi antenna on this device. That's why I'm surprised to see that this model is beaten by the iPad mini 1 by about 9 megabytes per second in download. Moving further, we did some benchmarks, obviously, and let's see some of the results. Okay, so I decided to compare the iPad mini 2 with the iPad mini 1 and the iPad Air when it comes to the benchmarks. So in 3D Mark, we scored 14. 1629 obviously we beat the iPad mini 1 that scored a measly 
2600 points, while the iPad Air beat us but only by a few points, uh, 14740, as you can see the two values are very close. Next up, we got GFX benchmark and we're going to check out the results of the T-Rex text. In the T-Rex text we achieved uh, 26 frames per second in the off-screen test, while the Mini 1 only achieves 3.5 frames per second and the iPad Air 27 frames per second. Geekbench 3 is the next benchmark. This is where we achieved 1397 on the iPad Mini 2 in the single core score and 2525 in the multi-core score, while the iPad Mini 1 scored 262 and 497 very low scores compared to this model and the iPad Air scored 1481 and 2698 as you can see the iPad Air beats this model in a lot of benchmarks but usually by only a dozen points in lean pack the iPad mini 2 scored 967 average mega flops while the iPad mini 1 scores 86 uh, mega flops in average and the iPad Air finally 1000 mega flops scored okay let's also check out the browser tests we got browser mark 2.0 right here with a score of 34.78 um, strangely the iPad mini 1 didn't want to perform the browser mark 2.0 test after I updated it to iOS 7.1 very strange and the iPad Air scored 35.63 points so it beat us by about 100 points and finally the Sun Spider test a very impressive score 425.6 ms the lower the better iPad mini 1 scores 13.26 so a huge difference and finally the iPad Air scores 426 so almost identical to this one as you can see these scores are almost identical to the ones of the iPad Air so performance is top notch however the evolution over the first iPad mini is huge if you look at these benchmarks okay I have to mention that this device has a CPU with a clock rate of 1.3 gigahertz and the iPad Air has a clock rate of 1.4 gigahertz Moving over to the web browsing experience, I'm going to load tabletnews.com right now. Here we go, tabletnews.com. Load it pretty fast. This is the scrolling experience. Pinch to zoom works like a charm. Very fast browser, very crisp screen. So the web browsing experience is great. As I said before, I'm an iPad mini one owner and 80% of the time I'm using the tablet for web browsing. So we're going to be doing a lot of that. This is Safari, you already know it, you can also get Chrome with a pretty decent experience. Okay, by the way, the keyboard is pretty comfy on the device, as you can see, very well spaced. Actually, better spaced than uh, an Android tablet like the LG G Pad, for example, so you're winning here on this device. I want to talk to you about the freshly launched iOS 7.1. This is a good uh, reason to have the iPad mini Retina for testing. You can actually talk about the fresh update. Ok, so we got iOS 7.1 installed here and uh, some of its updates aren't that big, but I must mention them anyway. This came in early March, it measures over 200 megabytes in space and it brings features like CarPlay for example. You can connect your iPhone or your iPad to your car using this system. You can play some tunes, you can integrate Siri into the car experience. There are new icons for the shutdown, I know it's a small update but I noticed it right away, this is the new icon for the shutdown and the face name notifications are better organized, you get rid of them on other devices. The calendar app will now get some lists, so the lists are back. If you love lists shown every day of things to do, well you got them back. And in the settings area you'll find a bunch of new stuff, especially when it comes to accessibility. A bunch of new options have been added, you can play with a bold font. You can uh, choose an option called the button shapes. It actually highlights the buttons such as this one. It's a small option, but people will love it. And let's see what else. You can also hold down the home button while using Siri. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so as I said, you start up Siri. Where am I? I don't know where you are, but you can show me. Go to settings, tap privacy, tap location services and turn it on. Then scroll all to Siri and okay. turn that off. Find me a restaurant nearby that serves seashells and Mexican food and Italian food and Spanish food all at once. What kind of 
restaurant to look in for. Anyway, the idea is that you can actually keep that uh, icon activated for a longer time. If you keep the home button pressed, you can input larger orders. Of course, not talking about food and such things. Okay, we're close to the end of the review. This is usually the part where I show you the apps and the operating system. You've already seen everything there is to see in the iPad Air review. Just a short recap. You do multitasking like this double tap the home button, swipe up to remove, you can uh, move between apps like this, you can do a five finger pinch like that to go to the home, or you can alternate between apps with these pinches, four finger pinches like this, okay, and other things worth mentioning here is that we got this app store that you're probably used to it already, a main section at the top, best new apps, best new games and such, then we got FaceTime, calendar photos very nicely organized photos very clear division we got camera roll we got my photo stream and we got the videos and you can even organize them by collections meaning the time frame when they were taken by year or by place on the map the shared stuff and stuff from the stream the contacts clock maps videos photo booth game center available right here a bunch of the games i've played lately and my scores and the uh, iTunes Store newsstand settings filled with options, actually a ton of them. Some people may want a better organization of the settings in the future iOS. Okay, so that's basically it. And now I'm going to show you the things that I usually show you. I mean the productivity apps. So we got pages right here. You can create a brand new document if you want, a project for your school, term paper, research paper, modern letter. And such this is actually an excellent replacement for word oh, and by the way you should know that office is coming to the ipad so this won't just be a replacement for word it will be a rival for word and you'll be able to add a lot of stuff here you can see here the text editing and all of its options bold italic underline alignment and other rules and regulation to arrange your text by Okay, so this is pages, this takes care of the productivity when it comes to the text. We got iBooks if you want to download books and read them. I'm actually quite an avid reader of books. Not gonna input my password here. Anyway, moving further, we got iMovie. Also for productivity, you can create projects out of your videos with this one. And uh, you should probably know that once you buy a device like this, like the iPhone or iPad, a brand new one, you get all the productivity suite you need. You get um, GarageBand, iMovie, iPhoto, Pages, Numbers and all that. And you can create a brand new project, a trailer. We had a lot of fun with this feature when we tested the iPad Air. You can create a trailer like this. You'll simply select your samples and include them in a funky video like this. You can even select the cast, credits and all that. Okay, I'm going to have to tap plus again, trailer again, coming of age and create trailer and then you'll be using your very own samples. Okay, so those are the videos I have right now. I can use the one with the geese first I'm guessing I would have to probably drag and drop it or maybe something like that let's see this one here you can also add photos from the camera roll okay so I managed to add that there I'm going to go to the videos see if I can add one from here you can actually take it with a certain duration Okay, and I probably have created a creepy video already. Let's go straight from the start. Okay, so castle and a gun, maybe related. Excuse my poor knowledge of iMovie. Ever since the iPad Air, I haven't played with it. And actually, who does, except for people who want to do some amateur video editing of their, excuse me again, boring holidays. Okay guys, this is it. This is the review of the iPad Mini 2, iPad Mini Retina with all the interesting apps, all the interesting features and iOS 7.1, brand new right here. It's time for the pros and cons. On the pro side, obviously the tablet is light, it's thin, it's very powerful. We have an excellent Retina display here. 
almost 500 lux of brightness, almost 500, it's a bit over 400 and we got very good audio, I wasn't expecting much from the speakers here but I was pretty impressed, the camera is obviously good, Apple never disappoints when it comes to the camera, even on devices like this one. The bunch of free apps that we get, the productivity apps is also a plus, the games look fantastic on the retina screen right here and uh, it's good for productivity, we got a crisp screen that shows you the text excellently in the web browser and stuff like that and on the con side we actually have cons as well included in the game, we have the slight overheating and the fact that the battery is actually one or two hours less efficient compared to the first iPad mini so while the iPad mini offers me about 12 hours of video playback this one only gets me to about 10 hours so you should remember that that's a sacrifice you make for the retina display also the audio capture when filming is only mono and the black levels of the screen are not that deep so the black is not deep we achieved 5 lux units on black Finally, people were expecting maybe a Touch ID fingerprint scanner right here in this area, they didn't get it, and now it's time for some grades. As you just heard, there are very few cons and a lot of pros for this model. We give it a 9.6 out of 10 for design here at tabletnews.com, 9.7 out of 10 for the hardware, and finally for the OS and UI a 9.5. The final grade is 9.6 out of 10 to tablenews.com. This is an excellent slate. It's perfect for apps, for games and for browsing. Um, I don't pretty much consume the music and videos on this device. I'm using Android for that. So if you want apps, games and browsing, this is just perfect for you. Okay, this is tablenews.com. 9.6 out of 10 for the iPad mini Retina. Bye bye.